Hi everyone, it's Lynn Dion here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I thought it would be fun to make a cute little tunnel card using some new images from Art Impressions. So let's go ahead and get started. So for the images today, we're going to be using this beautiful, brand new Art Impressions Birdhouse Village set. And this again is part of the Watercolor Journal series. And it's got the cute little birdhouses, that little basket, some flowers, we're going to be using everything except for the basket today. For paper, I'm using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock, and I've placed it in my mini Misty stamp positioner. I've got the VersaFine Onyx black ink, and that's what we'll be using to do our stamping. This is a permanent black ink, and this will be perfect for using our Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens today. I've got my Stampendable stamp press. I'm going to go ahead and press that out. And you can see how cute those little images are. So you can see I stamped several of the flowers. Let's get started coloring these in. I'm going to start with the lilac. And I'll add a bit of the lilac towards the center of the flower. I'll pull that color out towards the tips of the petals. And then I will add another layer of the lilac just to darken up that center a little bit. And those colors will be listed in the upper left hand corner as we're going along. And then for this one, I'm going to use the violet to do the darker center. And then for some of the flowers, I'll alternate that. I'll use the violet on the petals and the lilac in the centers. And then the next combination of colors I'm going to be using is the sugared almond pink and the pale rose. And I'll do the exact same thing. I'll start with the sugared almond pink a couple layers of that and pull it out towards the edges. And then I'll use that pale rose in the center and then I'll alternate those. So you can see you get a really pretty combination of colors. Let's go ahead and color in the birdhouses. For the post on each of these I'm using the beige and the mid brown and I'll just add a little bit of the mid brown off to the right hand side and then pull it over towards the left and that'll give me a little highlight down the sides. So I'll do the same thing for those other two. And then I'll stick with those two colors to do a few little other areas on these birdhouses. So I'll just add some shadows here and there. And then for this one, I'll just pull it up towards the top to keep the top of the roof the lightest. Now I am coordinating this with some patterned paper that I will show you a bit later on. So the colors I've selected, uh, I selected to go with a floral pattern paper that I was going to use, but in the end I did change my mind, but it was the inspiration for this color palette. So again, I'll show you that as we go. And then I've switched over back over to the, the pink tones that we used for the flowers. I just want to repeat those colors in the birdhouses just to tie everything together. So I'm not using a lot of colors here. I'm sort of trying to stick to one palette of basically some pinks, some violets, and then we've got a little bit of that Persian green that we'll bring in on one of the birdhouses. And then basically it'll be some beiges and brown tones. So I'm, again, I'm going to do a few of these in the pretty pink colors. And these birdhouses are fun because you can certainly add a lot of detail to these. You could add some stripes, you could add some polka dots, whatever you wanna do here. These are really fun to personalize. And as always, the packaging from Art Impressions is always so great. It gives you some great ideas of the way to color these in. That is one of my favorite things, is you can refer back to the packaging. You can copy exactly what Bonnie has done on the cover. And if you like that, usually she does it in more of a watercolor effect, but certainly the color combinations are perfect. So uh, again, use that packaging. That indexing is really helpful. It will also give you some really good ideas of where to place your shadows. If you're not sure about that, the packaging is a good reference for you. So again, for this little birdhouse, I'm going back to the lilac and the violet combination. I 
And what we'll be doing with this is we're going to cut this out as an oval. This will be the focal point for our card. So we're creating a tunnel card today. So the effect is that you're looking in towards the center of the card. So we're going to create some oval layers that will give that illusion of looking in towards the center of the card. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. It's really easy to do. Now here I'm just using that light gray and adding a few shadows. And then for the bird, I wanted to use that Persian green again, but I didn't want it to be as bold. So what I've done here is I've scribbled a little bit of that onto my glass medium mat. And then I'm using that blender pen and I'm picking up that color. You could use a water brush here to pick up the color as well, because you will see that it does stain the tip of my blender pen a little bit. But don't worry about that. Just scribble that blender pen onto some scrap paper and it will eventually go clear. So now I'm using my detail scissors to fussy cut out all of these little flowers. So let's set those aside for now and create the card base. So this is eight and a half by five and a half and I'm scoring it a four and a quarter. So this will be a standard A2 size card. I'll just press that fold out with my bone folder. Now we can go ahead and start to create that tunnel card. So I've got my oval dies. These are the nested oval dies from Art Impressions and these are also brand new and you get a ton of dies in here. So I'll grab that sixth smallest die just to get started. And what we're going to do is cut that opening out of the front of the card. So I'm centering it on the front of the card and I'm taping it down with some post-it tape I'll run that through the die cutting machine. You can see my plates are a little bit scratched up. So I just want to protect the card base. I'm going to lay a piece of scrap paper underneath it and on top of it. And that'll just protect that card from getting all those little lines in it that you can sometimes get. So now that I have that cut out, we can go ahead and die cut the focal image. So I'm using that same die. I'm just lining it up right around that image and we'll go ahead and die cut that piece. Again, I'm just placing it onto some scrap paper and die cutting that. So that'll fit right inside the center of the oval. Now let's go up a couple of sizes from that first one that we picked and we'll create the next layer. And then I'm going to go up two more from that one and create the third layer. So I've got some pattern papers here and you can see how beautiful these are. And that floral one is what inspired the color palette for today. So this is the Easter Journal Paper Pack. This is brand new from Art Impressions and these are double-sided papers and these are just absolutely gorgeous. So let's set that aside and get started cutting the panels for the front of the card. So I'm just going to line these up and cut these both at the same time. So I'll just cut these to the standard four and a quarter by five and a half. So now I've placed the pink striped paper inside my card and I'm going to use a pencil and trace out that oval. Now I'm going to line up the next die and I want to have an equal distance between the pencil line and the oval die. So I'm just lining that up. I'm taping that down with a little bit of post-it tape. Again, I'm adding my scrap paper just to protect everything and I'm running that through the die cutting machine. So now you'll see that that is a little bit larger than the oval we cut out of the card. Now the next layer, I'm going to lay that pink striped paper on the floral paper and then I'll trace out that oval again. And then we'll place that larger oval with equal distance around the pencil line all the way around. And then we'll tape that down with some temporary tape and run that through the die cutting machine. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I don't end up using this floral piece and I end up adding another design. 
Uh, I just wasn't sure. I thought that was just a little too busy. And I didn't like that white showing from underneath. So you can see there, I'm looking it over and I'm just not sure that I'm liking how this is coming together. So that first oval that is the white card, I wanna give that some color. So I'm going to go back to that paper pad and I'm going to select that lilac color with the white dots on it. And that just looks so pretty with this. So let's go ahead and cut that panel down to size. Now, I'm just showing you that you have lots of other options here. So you could select whatever you wanted. But I did decide that I, w I didn't want that oval in the center to be white. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before and cut this down to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'll go back to the first oval that we used to cut that window out. And for this one, since it's the exact same size as that oval, I can just pop that oval die right into place. It'll lock right into place and I can go ahead and tape that down. Again, I'm just using that temporary tape to hold that in place. And then I'll open up the card and run that through the die cutting machine. Again, I'm using that scrap paper to protect everything. I'll do that as we go along here. Since my plates are a little bit beat up and I want to protect that card. So now we can, you, you will see that that purple polka dot layer is what will sit over the white card now. And I really like that a lot better. So now I layered on the pink stripe and then I had the florals. And here's when I kind of decided that I thought that floral la layer was a little bit too much. So you could use that or not. I've shown you how to do that. So either way, whatever you prefer um, would work here if you want three layers of the ovals or just the two. I did decide to eliminate that floral one. I'll use it on another card. So I'm going to start with that polka dot layer. I'm using my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. And I'm going to make sure I have plenty of glue, especially around that oval opening. And I'll center that and glue that down. And then I'll take the pink striped one and I'll glue that down as well. Now another option here to give you more of that tunnel effect is to pop this striped piece of paper up with some foam mounting tape. So that is another option. I'm going to glue mine flat but certainly you could pop that up and that will give you a lot more dimension. And now you can see our focal image will fit right inside that oval. So keep your card closed and then just line this oval right back up into your card and glue that down and it will be centered perfectly. So let's grab our little bundle of flowers and we can go ahead and start creating our little arrangement here. And I'm going to glue all of the flowers flat except for the last one that will include our sentiment. I am keeping for the most part the flowers above the opening for the oval. I didn't want a lot of them to show through on the inside of the card when you open it up. So I am keeping them mostly on that purple polka dot paper and on the pink striped paper. I'm not having too much overlap the only one that will overlap that opening a little bit again is the, the one I pop up with the sentiment on it and I will show you that. So this was fun just creating this little flower arrangement and then down here these will show through the opening of the card so I'm just going to create kind of a little U shape just kind of covering up the bottom area of my oval. And we are going to be adding some detail to that oval with a black permanent marker. I'll just add another little set of flowers. And now you can see those flowers from the inside of the card showing through to the front. And I just think that looks so pretty. So now that we have that all set, I'm going to save that one little set of flowers for my sentiment. Let's first add that detail 
I've got my 0.1 millimeter Pit Artist pen. This is a permanent black pen. And I'm going to create a little stitch line all the way around this oval. I'm just using little dashes. And I'll add a couple little hash marks on either side just to give it a little bit more interest. And this will define that focal image a little bit better. You will see that stitching when the card is closed. Then I've got my Signo white gel pen and I'll add a few highlights here and there. Now let's grab the journal template die set from Art Impressions. And this has a ton of image of dies in it. They're just fantastic. I use them all the time for many other projects. And it has three border dies in it. I'm going to grab this scallop border. I'll go ahead and cut this to five and a half inches. And then I'll lay that border right along the edge of my pattern paper. I'll tape it down with some temporary tape. And you can see it's a little bit shorter than the five and a half inches, so we will have to repeat this. So let's use the Sizzix Sidekick to run this through. And then we'll reposition that die. Just going to slide it down to the right a little bit. I just want to overlap a couple of those little scallops we've already cut just to make sure that I've lined it up nice and straight. I'll tape that down and then we can run the rest of this through. So now that we have that, I did cut that down to about one half inch. And you could use either side of this. You have the stripe side and the polka dot side. I'm going to use those polka dots and I'll run that right along the edge of the card. making sure that's lined up really well. Now that that's all set, let's take a look at the sentiments. We have a couple choices here. This is the friend sentiment set from Art Impressions, and this is brand new. And some of these would be really pretty, the love blossoms, bloom, spring, and we're, but we're going to be using this one today. This is the birthday sentiment set. You have tons of cute little sentiments to choose from. I'm going to use this banner die. And you can see that it's a little bit small for my sentiments, but I'm going to show you a little trick to extend that. These are the tag stitch dies from Art Impressions. So I've, again, I've got some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. I've placed it in my Mini Misty. I'm using my Versamark watermark ink pad to do my inking. That is a embossable ink pad. And then I'm using my Pink and Main anti-static powder tool just to take any static out of that paper. I'll go ahead and stamp my image. And again, that says it's your day. And I've got this really pretty embossing powder. This is from Ranger and this is the blush pink. And it's just so soft and so pretty. And it goes perfectly with this paper that we're using. So I'll sprinkle that on and just put the excess back in the container. And then I'll grab my heat tool and we can go ahead and emboss this. Just making sure it's nice and hot before I get started. And then I can go ahead and heat set this. Now I do want to die cut that sentiment using that banner die. You can see that there. So it is again a little bit too short for this sentiment. So I'm going to place it towards the right hand side of the sentiment, making sure I line it up nice and straight. I'll tape that down with some temporary tape and then we're just going to partially die cut this. So we're going to cut about three quarters of it maybe from about that point over to the right hand side. So wherever your plate, your top plate is, is where you're going to be doing your cutting. So I've placed the top plate off to the right hand side. And now you can see that I partially die cut that. Now we need to cut the other side. So I'm gonna slide the die over. And I wanna lock it in place with the, the die, the portion that we've already cut. 
So I'm going to make sure that it slides right into place. It'll almost lock into place for you. Once it does, you can go ahead and tape that down and then we'll just cut the left hand side of this die. So I'll place the plate where I want to do my cutting and I'll run that through again. So that will extend that die out a little bit longer. And then let's go ahead and stamp the sentiment for the inside of the card. Again, I'm using the Pink and Main Anti-Static Powder Tool. I'm going back to that same stamp set and I'm using the sentiment that says, May your every wish come true. And then I'll go ahead and use the Versamark ink pad again, sprinkle on that same blush pink embossing powder, and go ahead and heat set that. May your every wish come true. That is just so pretty. So now I've got some foam adhesive. These are little squares. And again, I'll list these down below for you. These are nice, they're very dimensional. I'm just gonna place four of those on the back of my banner and then I'll remove the backing from those and we'll pop up this sentiment. Just making sure I'm lining it up nice and straight. And then I'm going to add that last little set of flowers right on the top of that, off to the left-hand side. And I did end up adding a little bit of foam tape underneath the left-hand side of those flowers. But I did that off camera. And there you can see that it does show through the card a little bit, but it's, I think it looks fine. So let me give you a closer look at the finished card and you can see how pretty this color combination is with these beautiful flowers. And again, the, the palette was inspired by that first piece of floral cardstock that I showed you, which we didn't end up using today, but you certainly could. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.